but this right wing is just looking really rough. Hello everyone and welcome to an extra video this week, because today is a subscriber recommended video. Now normally I would pop a little comment somewhere along here saying who actually recommended this video. Unfortunately I can't find the comment anymore, so I have no idea who recommended this to us. I think it might have been Gavin. But I could also be wrong. But anyway, today I'm going to be doing some paper quilling. And hopefully someone did recommend this to us. Unless I dreamt it, I don't know. I'm sure someone left a comment on one of my videos telling us to do this. If not, then you're just getting an extra video this week. Okay, so I just bought this little kids quilling kit online. Because it's my first time and I thought since it's for kids, I should be able to do it. And it does say ages seven plus, so I should be okay. And by the looks of things, I'm gonna be making this owl. So I'm quite interested. I do know what paper quilling is. I have heard of it before. I've just never done it. So, oh, I've just had a look at the back. Look at all them instructions. Why? Okay, well, see how this goes. Okay, you don't actually get a lot in here. I was expecting more bits to it, but there's not a lot. I've got a selection of different photographs of birds. So a hummingbird there, a flamingo, an owl, and a parrot. We've got this thing, and lots of colorful strips of paper. I'm just gonna have a quick read of these instructions because I don't know what I'm doing. But these instructions, although there's a lot of them, they just seem a little bit vague. I feel none the wiser. I'm gonna go for the owl. It already shows us what it's supposed to look like on the box. So I think that'll be the easiest. Okay, so in here, you've got this little tool, which I have no idea what it does. Oh, it like twirls the paper. And you can use the handle to twirl the paper as well. This is a mold. This is a shite mold. I don't know about this. I don't know whether this is the craft for someone like me. So we've got some glue here as well. Do I have to wait for stuff to dry. I don't know, it doesn't tell us. I think I'll start with this thing first because uh, I don't know why I'm gonna start with this thing first if I'm quite honest with you, but I am. Apparently you can just place this into here. It's got like a little like latch thing and then like twirl it. I guess I'll just twirl the whole thing, I think. <laughs> what? How'd you get it? How'd you get it to do that? These instructions are so bad. And you just squish it. Uh, I feel like this mold needs to be deeper. It's just like a little, like a little cardboard cutout. I don't, I don't really get it. Right, well, we'll just glue it. I'm just gonna try and do something and hope for the best. So I've made like a little circle thing here. And I think I just add a little bit of glue and then stick it down. The issue I'm having though is if I'm putting them in the stencils like this, then do I have to wait forever for the glue to dry? Because I'm gonna have to make loads of them. I'm just wondering if I can half ass it. Is that something you're allowed to do with paper quilling? I'm not gonna use the stencil. I've decided I don't like that. I think that's a waste of time. I think just hand doing stuff with it and just gluing bits and then you just glue it down to here. And then maybe if we like smush, I think smushing might be a good technique. Oh, okay. I've glued something on. I just don't know how I feel about this so far. Maybe I just need to give it a chance. Maybe I need to glue this round first and then it'll kind of seal everything in. They don't give you a lot of glue in this kit either. So I have a feeling you're gonna need quite a lot. Also, if this is made for kids, I don't think any kids are gonna have the patience to do this. I know I wouldn't if I was a kid, because I don't even when I'm an adult. Oh, actually, it glues down quite quick with just that glue. I'm assuming they're giving us PVA. Like I've done the outline of a wing and one little twirly bit, and that's taken us, well, I've been recording for 13 minutes, so it's probably taken us about 10 minutes to do that. But I feel like I know what I'm doing now, so I think the next bit will just be easier and quicker. I think definitely cutting these strips of paper to shorter sizes is the way to go because otherwise you spiral, it's, there's just too much paper in there and it just springs apart. So smaller spirals are the way to go. I just don't know whether I'm enjoying paper quilling so far. We'll see though, it's still early days. I know for a fact mine's not gonna look as nice as the picture. They obviously have a way better technique than I do. Like I'm just watching the clock go back on my viewfinder and I've hit 20 minutes. All I've done is that. So I suppose if you're gonna buy this for your kids, Kids, then it's gonna keep them occupied for a very long time. I think I would enjoy paper quilling more if I had free range of what I was doing instead of following a template. I think following a template's just a little bit boring. But you know, at least I'm, I'm learning something. I'm learning new techniques here. 
And that's always nice. Oh, also, by the way, if you recommend us a product to review in the comment section, for some reason, if you leave a link at the moment on YouTube, it just it's just disappearing. Someone left us one a little while back and I, I can't find it anymore. I have no idea what you recommended to us. So I would advise if you want me to try anything or do anything, don't put a link in there because YouTube just does not like it at all. So don't blame me, blame YouTube, write them a letter. So I've got one wing complete and it looks absolutely nothing like theirs in their box. I don't know how they got it so tiny. They've used a kid's hand as well. I think that's lying. I think they photoshopped that kid's hand in. And there's definitely no way there's enough glue in here unless I'm using too much. And normally at this point I would say, well I've tried it, I've, I'll give my opinion and stuff because it's a very time consuming thing. But I want to finish this, I'm going to finish it because I give up on a lot of stuff. And I don't want people to think that I'm just a giver up. So I'm going to at least try and get a good chunk more of this done for some reason. It shouldn't take too long, I feel like I know what I'm doing now so the rest should be easy. Also since I think this is quite a therapeutic activity where you just kind of like zone out and stick paper to more bits of paper then let me know in the comments what's really pissed you off this week what's really kind of wound you up and bothered you because i think sometimes it's quite nice to just just have a little vent get it off your shoulders get it off your mind I get pissed off by many things during the week, to be fair. But I think the biggest thing to piss us off this week was just bad driving. Just people who just can't seem to drive. Like every time I drive to work, I seem to just come across just the worst drivers ever. They either pull out in front of you when they're not supposed to pull out in front of you, or just drive really slow or drive too fast and just generally just can't drive. Like if you live in, I think it's America, I don't think roundabouts are very common in America. I might be wrong, so you can correct us if you want. But roundabouts are quite common in the rest of Europe. And it's quite surprising to me how many people don't know how a roundabout works. And if you're one of those people, I'll give you a little refresher. When you come to a roundabout, you give way to your right. You don't give way to your left. And it goes round like that, and then it just it, there's just a flow of traffic. So if you stop and you're giving weight to your left... You do, you're just doing it wrong. It makes roundabouts completely worthless. And I've just... I've had a lot of them people recently and they just wind us up. Like if you can't drive or you're a bad driver or you're not a confident driver, then just invest in a bus pass. Just get off the road. But yes, that's my big kind of bugbear this week, which has really wound us up. So let me know what yours is in the comments. I'm sure there'll be many people who also get pissed off with... Just crappy drivers. <laughs> Trying to think what else has pissed us off this week. I think that's about it, really. It's the only thing I can really talk about on the internet. There's plenty of other things that have pissed us off, but I won't go into that. Instead, I will just do some more paper quilling and let all those bad vibes just wash away. <laughs> The weird thing is, the more I get into paper quilling, the worse I feel like I'm getting at it. Maybe it's because I'm becoming really impatient, I don't know. But this right wing is just looking really rough. Also, at the time of recording this, I've just got past 4,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel, which is pretty crazy. So thank you very much for everyone who has subscribed. If you haven't, then subscribe. I can't promise you every video is as exciting as paper quilling. But it's crazy to think like 4,000 people subscribe to a channel. I know there's like loads of other people who have millions of subscribers and stuff and that just must be insane to have millions and millions of people watching your content i can't imagine what that would feel like one thing i have noticed though is the more your channel grows the more kind of like bitchy comments you get and the more kind of hate comments you get and stuff which is always nice fortunately i have a channel where i get a lot more like nice comments and loving comments which i always appreciate also i find it very difficult to accept a compliment i don't know whether anyone 
to notice that or not. I definitely think it's a British thing. We just don't know how to react. Like, oh, someone said something nice about us. What do I do? So I don't get as much hate as I know a lot of other people get, but I still get a few. What I like to do is I just like to troll them back. It depends if I'm in the mood for it or not. If I wake up first thing in the morning and I wake up to a really shitty comment, I just, I just wouldn't want to be here. I really wouldn't. And I know you're not supposed to engage with trolls and negative comments and stuff, but sometimes I just can't resist. Ah, another wing done. It's actually, it's not looking too bad, you know. Like, look at them wings. They're all right. It, it doesn't look like the picture, but it looks like paper quillin. I just feel like I want to be a little more experimental with it. I don't want to follow the lines and the shapes and the colors and stuff. I want to do my own thing. I think that's what I'm like in life, really. When someone tells us to do something, I want to do the opposite just because. Do I have a problem with authority? Maybe I do. I think you could create some really nice stuff with paper quillin. And I have seen, I think I've seen some stuff on like Pinterest where they've done paper quill and art and like murals and stuff. And they look really cool. I just, I don't know how I feel about this little thing. I know I wanted something for beginners, but I feel like this is just a little bit too beginnery, kiddish and plain. So I'm not shitting on paper quilling, if anyone's wondering, because I'm assuming there'll be plenty of people out there who adore paper quilling. It'll be their favorite thing to do. And I'm not going to say anything. I don't want a hateful comment in the comment section. I'm not going to slag you off for enjoying it. I think I'll finish the main owl bit of this rather than doing all the flowers and the little baby owl and stuff. Because otherwise, I'm going to be here all day and I do have a few things to do today and I think if I get the full owl done it'll give you a good idea of what this is like and it, I'm not giving up it doesn't mean I'm giving up I'm not I swear I'm not also do you like my new hat it's galaxy quite nice isn't it it's just cheap off Amazon it cost me like a fiver I think I can also tell it's cheap because it feels like plastic on my head. But you get what you pay for. Okay, so I got a good chunk of the main owl done. So I did the beak and the wings, but I wasn't going to do all this tiny intricate stuff because it would just it would just take us far too long. And I actually didn't mind paper quilling. The only thing I struggled with is I don't know how they do kind of like they've got like heart shapes and stuff. And I don't know how that's possible. There must be some very specific techniques to do it. Yes, obviously you've got this mold thing, but I just, I couldn't get my mind around that. I thought it was completely pointless. But I'm sure paper quilling experts have absolutely no problem doing it. Just for an amateur like me, it was a struggle. But other than that, I enjoyed trying something new. It's been on my radar for a while and I'm glad I did try it. I'm glad one of you guys potentially recommended it to us. Unless obviously I dreamt it, which... It's a, it's a possibility, to be fair. But hopefully you did enjoy today's extra midweek video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you on Friday for a brand new video. And I'll give you a little bit of a hint. Woof. So yeah, I wonder what it could be. But you won't have to wait long, because it'll be out on Friday. So I'll see you then.